I'm the uh, director of uh, online education at Siebel Institute. Uh, I first want to welcome you to this very uh, informal, informa informational uh, session about uh, uh, one of our offering, the uh, World Brewing Academy Concise Course. Um, you can ask questions uh, during the uh, during the time that we're chatting, uh, and uh, we'll we'll do our best to answer uh, your questions. Uh, you can also at the bottom of your screen you can see this. Uh, uh, there's a link that will bring you directly to our um, to our website, our Siebel website, if you need more in-depth information about uh, certain topics. So um, yeah, again, the, my name is Richard Dubay. I'm the director of online education. Um, I've been in the brewing industry on and off for the past, uh, I call it 45 years or so. Uh, I'm a microbiologist, biochemist, and started with Molson, uh, and then John ship, uh, jump ship to Labatt uh, slash Budweiser in the United in, in Canada, uh, and then in 1993 uh, moved to the United States with uh, Boston Beer Company, uh, where I was in charge of uh, R&D and quality control. Several years uh, goes by. Uh, if you would ask my wife, I had a midlife crisis and I left everything after 20 years and I got into education. I did uh, my master in arts of uh, teaching and taught science to uh, high schoolers for 10 years. Uh, that's the way to bring back your Zen and to center yourself a little bit. During that time, I still kept my link. I still kept my uh, my connection with the brewing industry uh, as uh, as an adjunct teacher at at Siebel. Uh, and then uh, in 2011, came back in the industry uh, where I became the uh, brewmaster and uh, VP quality production at a local brewery here, where I am in uh, Kentucky, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Wow. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, I became uh, the director of online education. So anyway, enough, enough about me. That's a little bit my story. Um, you can contact me uh, via email uh, if you have any uh, questions. So what are we doing here? Uh, we have two great, uh, two great person. They are alumni from, uh, like I said, the concise course. It's one of our most popular uh, intermediate level uh, depth of knowledge course that we offer. Uh, we have uh, Patrick uh, that is uh, that uh, just completed the online version of that course. And we have Kelsey here uh, that actually uh, completed the campus version, uh, the first the first campus version in about uh, a year, almost a year and a half uh, after the uh, COVID uh, COVID, the limitation was, uh, or restrictions were kind of uh, loosened up a little bit. So I'm going to let them uh, introduce uh, introduce themselves. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey, give us a little bit about yourself, your your background, uh, your growing experience, and maybe even a little bit of your future goals, if you will. Sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Kelsey Cable. Uh, I live here in Portland, Oregon. And originally, kind of my brewing experience, I brewed at Wayfinder Beer. Uh, I helped open up, and then once we started making beer, I worked there for about three and a half years, working from assistant brewer up to, to just brewer. Um, and yeah, so I've been involved in the beer scene here a lot, but I just didn't have like a science background. So yeah, that's kind of what, where I went. <laughs> Excellent. What about you, Patrick? Or PJ. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, PJ Dunn. I live outside of Buffalo, New York, a uh, little suburb called East Aurora. And uh, most of my experience, you know, career experience has been in other industries. And there have been little tidbits that I've been able to use in brewing. But uh, I began as a home brewer uh, in about 2008. So I've been at that for quite a while. And uh, I did have ambitions of entering into the industry. And, you know, I think like a lot of folks wanted to potentially open my own brewery. So I've kind of taken a long path towards it, but I did spend about three years uh, brewing at uh, a spot here in Buffalo called Thin Man Brewery. And uh, at the time that was a 15 barrel uh, kind of pub brewery. We put out a lot of beer on that little system. Uh, they've since grown. Um, they now have a second location that's a, a production facility. Uh, but that's where I have my uh, kind of in-person experience. And uh, uh, yeah, really wanted to, uh, most of my 
knowledge and my foundation came from home growing, which is good and it's useful, but it's not, um, it's not a formal education. You know, I think there are some things that home brewers pick up that maybe aren't uh, correct or, uh, you know, absolutely, absolutely right. Maybe the level of detail I was looking for wasn't there. So I uh, really wanted to get a more formal education. And uh, I am now in the process of opening my own brewery, which should be open next year. Excellent. Excellent. So if I, if I, if I kind of uh, summarize that a little bit, my feeling, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I see from you, Kelsey, and, and you, PJ, that basically uh, you guys have, have as quite, quite a, a fairly significant amount of uh, hands-on uh, hands experience, uh, but you needed a little bit more, and I'm, you're going to use your, your, uh, your word, uh, Kelsey, uh, foundation, right? Uh, am I right when I say that? Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, I originally was going to go to the concise course back in May, however long ago before COVID. <laughs> so I had been like two years in and definitely needed like, yeah, a little more direction and foundation. Yeah. Excellent. Is it, is it the same, uh, same idea, uh, PJ? Um, yeah, similar. So I was, I was already pretty well on my path to, you know, what I'm heading towards now opening this brewery, but, uh, uh, it was actually, it was something I was thinking about. I had certainly been aware of the, the Siebel Institute and the course offering. I didn't know a whole lot about it, but I, I was aware of it by reputation. And, uh, it was really a conversation with uh, a fellow that I'm, I'm actually going to be buying our, our brewing system from, uh, he's been through this and, you know, a bunch of the other offerings and, uh, really recommended and, and, uh, um, encouraged me to pursue it. So uh, that's what really got me to say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to, you know, find the money to pay for it and, uh, you know, commit the time to, to go through the concise course. And uh, it, it was good advice. Very good. So, so in your case, so or in your case, it's from somebody that, you know, that went through Siebel, uh, were obviously satisfied and then say, Hey, that might be a good investment for you. Yeah. And I was, you know, like I said, I was thinking about it anyways, but it was his advice that really pushed me towards it and said, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. Excellent. What about you, Kelsey? What brought you to, to Siebel? How did you zoom in or zero in <laughs> on, on Siebel? I definitely, yeah, all my favorite brewers went to Siebel. No. <laughs> uh, my boss, uh, Kevin Davey, he definitely preached Siebel's uh, education. He did like the whole, he went to Germany and Domans and everything, but um just having the network and everything he really thought that that was important but then also people from von ebert and all these breweries in portland uh all preached siebel <laughs> so that that was definitely telling well that's good so so then our job is done <laughs> our job is done um, yes. so that that's great so uh, kelsey I'm, I'm gonna go back uh, and i didn't fully mention that uh in my introduction but one of our goal is to uh, explain a little bit the campus version and the online version uh, and, and maybe zero in on, you know, of course, the different, uh, uh, the different experience, uh, and, but also the similarity. So could you talk to us a little bit about your, your campus, uh, campus experience? Sure. How long it was and, you know, oh. how, much, how much stuff you did. What, what did you do at <laughs> night? You're supposed to be studying, but uh... <laughs> there's a balance. Um, so I went right like in the middle of May and it was like hands up. We were touch and go as far as what the mask mandates and what we could do when we were there. But uh, I stayed at a hostel that's like a block away. It was like a thousand dollars for two weeks. So it wasn't the best accommodation, but if somebody's like trying to go cheap, that was great. <laughs> the Parthenon Chicago. Um, and so it was really convenient. It's in Greek town, which is near downtown. So after school, we would usually go out for beers or go on a river trip or do some stuff with the class since a lot of people are from out of town. So that was nice. Um, there's like a city pass you can buy that'll get you into like all the museums and everything. So that was, that was a money saver. Um, but yeah. So the campus was great. We like had little individual booths with plexiglass. So we wore masks the whole time, but it felt really comfortable because there was only 13 of us, so. 
Yeah, unfortunately, the the, uh, the 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 COVID regulations and everything kind of limited limited the amount of uh, people that we could uh, we could accommodate. And uh, you're right, you say 13, yeah, 12, 13 was the maximum we could we could do. But I'm I'm glad to hear that uh, that you felt comfortable uh, with uh, in 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 the setup uh, over there. Mm -hmm. uh, what what about the what about the instructors? How was uh, how was the instructors? It was it was really interesting hearing where everyone worked. Uh, I feel like it was like a good mix of people who worked for like Coors and, and big, big corporations and then tiny breweries as well. Uh, like Andreas works for Chicago breweries. And that was like interesting to hear like a brewmaster talk versus somebody like Fred Shear, who has just an insane in science background, you know, worked for NASA and stuff like that. So uh, and then Malt. Yeah, it was just great listening to to all the different levels of experience. A good mix a good mixture then. Yeah. Very good. And how long is the how long is the concise uh, um, campus? Two weeks. So eight hours a day, lectures, five days a week. So so it's they're really cra so they're <laughs> cracking the whip, right? Yeah. They're you gotta fit a lot in your brain. Keeping you keeping you online. That's very good. Uh, <laughs> what about you, PJ? So when we're talking about the online, it's it's obviously a uh, a different uh, mode or system of delivery. Uh, but to, to to try to give us a picture of a little bit of uh, you know when you were uh, by in your basement or your uh, your man cave there <laughs> and you were facing the computer and uh, you know how how did you feel? Or right, or let me right. rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Let's start by why did you elect to go online and, and not campus? Yeah, so for me, that was, you know, pretty strictly out of necessity. Uh, I, I like fun. Uh, I would have liked <laughs> to go to Chicago. Um, but, uh, you know, I had a, a number of commitments here. Uh, I'm married. I have two little kids, uh, five and three. And uh, leaving for two weeks, uh, even uh, for a very good reason, uh, would have been very challenging. So, um, you know, the option of having an online version is really what enabled me to do it. I think if it were in Chicago, I, I probably wouldn't have been able to pull it off. Um, so, uh, yeah, just the the flexibility of kind of doing it on my own time here at home, um, you know, and, and spreading the learning out over a period of time just worked better, better for me personally. And, uh, you know, I, I think it actually worked out pretty well. Um, you know, I obviously haven't gone through the in-person version, uh, but it is, it's a lot of information. Um, and, you know, the, the online version, uh, I think I think end to end, it's about three months. I finished a little bit early, uh, both because I was able to, my, my schedule here enabled me to, but also I had uh, some co commitments coming up right around the time I, I needed to have the final finished by. So I, I did kind of accelerate myself towards the end. Of, to finish up, but uh, uh, you know, I I have a hard time uh, thinking, you know, how how that might be in the in, in person version because I know for me it was helpful to be able to take the information from each lecture and digest that over a day or a couple of days before I entered into the next one and you know think about questions and and think about how to build uh, one piece of information on top of another. Uh, so you know, really, I thought the uh, the schedule of the uh, remote online version worked really well for me. Very good. Would you would you agree when I say that that um, one of the big difference between the campus and the online, uh, Kelsey, you have let's say maybe the advantage of having the instructors live uh, right there, uh, so that might allow you to digest the information a little bit quicker because you can ask a question right away. But this is compensated. Uh, 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 when you are online by having more time, just like a little bit PJ explained. Would you agree with, with that uh, assessment? Oh, definitely. There were days that when we'd have our after school beer, <laughs> we'd all be like, I wish this part was online, <laughs> you know, because it was just yeah. so hard to take so much information and just cram it, yeah. like, especially like the physics and getting into those like nitty gritty like formulas and it was a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and for for our uh, for our audience, uh, I mentioned that campus is two weeks, uh, online is uh, is eleven weeks. Eleven weeks. Uh, how uh, PJ? How did you feel about? Uh, I, I would like you to um, push a little bit more the idea of of working at your own pace 
Uh, but sure. that said, I know that we have deadlines. So how did you how did you deal or maybe explain what deadlines are uh, to our audience? Yes. There? Um, so basically, and maybe you can remind me, but I, I believe there are around 40 individual lectures. Is that right? 33. I think it's 38. Oh, okay, 33. 33. Um, <laughs> just, just to be exact, 33. Felt like, felt like 40. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so um, at the beginning of the course, uh, what was provided to all of us taking the online course was kind of a syllabus and a recommended schedule. And, you know, had those 11 weeks and, and had them listed out, you know, by the actual week, you know, line items. And you should really have these um lectures completed each week and, and for those who don't know uh after each lecture there is a multiple choice or multiple response quiz and that's normally between i think seven and 15 questions uh and then there's also a kind of essay uh and they're two separate things there's the quiz and like an exam and the exam is usually a, a written answer it was three questions three or four questions but it i would answer maybe the, i drove the instructors nuts but i wrote a novel for each one um, so uh, so anyways that syllabus really spelled out here's the schedule you need to follow to stay on track and there were also some cutoffs you know you need to be through this lecture by this date um, I think it was the, the first 13 lectures needed to be completed by a certain date and um, you know once you pass that date those lectures are going to be closed you won't be able to go back to them you could go review them but you can't go take the exam and stuff so it kind of does force you to keep up um, so for me on my schedule, um, you know, I'm kind of all over the place. We've been, we've been kind of working out, a, a, a hodgepodge of childcare stuff and, uh, uh, you know, work and, you know, family commitments and stuff. So it was really, sometimes it'd be at night. I'd come down here to the, to the, the learning station and, um, you know, sit, take a lecture and do the exam and the quiz. Uh, sometimes I'd get up early and do them. So, um, but for the most part, I stuck with the schedule um, as recommended. But there were a few times there was one week where I just had a lot going on otherwise, and I, you know, I truly didn't have a lot of time to dedicate to this otherwise. So I didn't do anything um, with the concise course for a whole week. But then the next week I doubled down. So you know, I had it pretty well documented. It was provided to me what I needed to accomplish, you know, during X amount of time. And uh, I was able to kind of manage my schedule around that and fit it in as it worked for me. And then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, or I think you said it's a, it's 11 weeks. I did it, I think, in about nine and a half. Uh, and towards the end, um, basically, we had a family vacation coming up, and I wanted to be just done, <laughs> finished with everything before I went. So I did uh, accelerate, and I, I did, you know, a couple weeks worth in one week and um took a couple of days to pre prepare for the final exam and uh then i took that and i was done with that about a week and a half uh, before the deadline for everything so you know really it was very clear to me what the schedule needed to be and um you know i just kept up with it and worked at my own pace and it you know it is a commitment it is a fair amount of work um and it was something i had to think about working into my kind of weekly schedule but uh it was very doable for me and it worked really well for me. Excellent. Yeah, and, and I, I'm going to do a little sidebar uh, a little bit later about, about what you said because, uh, um, because I feel it's important. But I want to ask uh, Kelsey, uh, I, I, know, I know you said that, uh, you know, uh, in the <laughs> evening you did a little bit of a touristy thing and uh, have a beer with, uh, uh, with the rest of the, of the, of the class. But how, how did you manage, uh, and, and you're right, there's a tremendous amount of information to digest. Uh, so how did you manage to uh, digest as much as possible uh, during those quick two weeks? Well, it was nice because we would all have our computers out with the slideshow. And then I was just taking notes the whole time. And the professor would be going through those slideshows so it was nice because at night I could go home and if I was going to make like flashcards or whatever, I could go through the slideshow see, and compare it to my notes and like be able to do like a little brief summary of the day and just recap it. And then the tests were spaced out like the first week test and then the second week test we did it like the Thursday instead of the Friday because we were able to like absorb that information the Friday. Um, so that's kind of 
that was nice. So we had like fresh information. It wasn't like an overall arching test where you'd have to like go back to last Monday and review that. So they definitely broke it up to try to help us absorb it faster. Excellent. And, and, and then have course, something to review when we get back home. <laughs> yeah, which which is which is essential. So so we're providing we're providing a tremendous amount of library and and additional resources and so on and so forth. And of course the lectures the lectures themselves. I guess I guess uh, uh, being campus, your other advantage is that uh, when you do your review before you go for a beer, uh, you, you can <laughs> come you can come back the next day and of course ask ask questions to to the instructors even if it's not uh, because we have we have uh, maybe you can explain that there are several instructors uh, throughout the two weeks uh, so you might have an instructor one day and that person. Uh, went back home for the next day and so on and so forth. But you, what I'm saying is that you can come back and ask, ask the questions, obviously, to anyone that is, uh, that is there as an instructor. Anyone would know, yeah, be able to have enough knowledge to probably answer it specifically. Even just John, even just John. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, we <won't> <laughs> Uh, but John was email. great for that, too. He always too. send me an email when you cannot answer an question. <laughs> well, and then if something like if you asked a previous professor and you didn't connect it with them, you know, like different learning styles, you could ask the next professor when somebody, you know, could you could recognize who would be able to explain it in a way that would work for you. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I've been there. I know I know teaching. Sometimes you have to repeat the same thing five different <laughs> ways not five not the same way five times but five different ways you know to make sure that you hit everybody that's that's kind of cool the sidebar the sidebar i wanted to make about what uh, what pj mentioned is uh, because uh, there, there might be for the audience there might be a little bit of a contradiction when we say well there are some deadlines but uh, you say that you work at your own pace and, and i have to explain the reason why we have deadlines is that uh, is that we realized over the years, as you may or may not realize, uh, online for Siebel or the World Brewing Academy uh, didn't started with the pandemic, right? I mean, we are we've been doing online uh, uh, teaching for the past uh, almost 20 years. Okay, so it's nothing new for us. Um, it, but we we did realize over the years that that despite the fact that we're dealing with adults that are supposed to be responsible and uh, supposed to be uh, doing their own schedules. Uh, we also realized that you know, uh, they're, they're married, they have families, they have a job, and sometimes they, they fell behind. And we know that for the best educational experience, uh, we realized over the years that we need to put a little bit of, we call them gates between each other, we call them gates, to put some gates to force the people to reach those gates in an appropriate uh, appropriate time. Otherwise, uh, we realize that uh, we're not, it's not a it's not to it's not beneficial for the learner to let them rush everything, and it's not beneficial for the tutors. And maybe you can make a comment on that, PJ. When you are writing those mini essays, the tutors <laughs> really give you some feedback. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, so first of all, I would say I never, I appreciated that those gates, that kind of structure, because uh, it is my nature to procrastinate. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I graduated college like 15 years ago. So um, it's been a while since I've been a student and uh, apparently some old habits do die hard. And uh, if it weren't for those, I could very well see myself you know, coming up on the deadline, I think it was July 18th that everything had to be done and finding myself on like July 1st with almost the entire thing to do. So it helped me, you know, to manage myself and manage the pace myself. Um, so I, I think your other question was about the instructor. So, you know, throughout the 11 weeks, uh, I had two instructors, there was Hugo and Wayne. Mm -hmm. And um, we did have a little bit of communication outside of you know, the kind of formal structure, but uh, most of my interaction with them was actually through notes and comments on my written exam. So, um, you know, and it was such that I could kind of leave, if I had a question, I could, I could put it in there and I would always come back and review their notes and 
you know, if I got something wrong in their corrections, uh, the the, uh, uh, the next day or, or whenever it was, uh, whenever the, the corrections came through. And there was always, you know, a fairly verbose uh, feedback in there. It wasn't just yeah. like a, yep, yep, nope, uh, you know, pretty thorough explanations. I remember, uh, uh, I, I think the segment that I found most challenging was uh, there's a, a manual uh, brewing calculation that I had to do. I forget what it was specifically, but didn't get it right. And uh, uh, Hugo gave a very thorough explanation of where I went wrong. And uh, it was something where I made a mistake early on. And, you know, generally my answer was correct, but I made an early mistake that put all the calculations off. And he even picked that out and pointed it out to me and said, you know, you actually were mostly right, but here early on you, you screwed something up. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought the feedback especially through the exams was quite helpful. Um, the quizzes, which are multiple choice and the instructor is not, at, at least from what I can tell, actively involved in, uh, it does pause after each question and there's a very thorough explanation, whether you got the question right or wrong, at the bottom of, of each individual question. So it takes a couple of minutes to go through those quizzes. It's not like you can just bang, 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 answer the questions and move on. Um, but it does kind of, and it, it doesn't take a long time, but it does, uh, you know, present you with the opportunity to just kind of like cement that learning. So yeah, very good. Uh, again, for 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 the the benefit of the audience uh, is that uh, what uh, PJ is describing is basically tools that compensate uh, to a certain extent that compensate for what Kelsey experienced, where again Kelsey can ask questions to classmates, to to of course the instructors. Uh, then they have breaks and then they can have a little bit of a conversation. So, of course, the interactivity, the level of inter interactivity live is obviously uh, much greater than when you are online. However, online, um, and we like to differentiate what you had, Kelsey, we call them instructors because they are really, quote unquote, teaching the lecture, mm -hmm. right? Whereas online, we call them tutors. Uh, they they expect you quote unquote to do your work, and then they will correct and they will put you back on track if you're totally off. And and how we do it, we do it through the feedbacks that are given not only to the uh, what you mentioned, uh, what we call the auto graded portion of the assessment. Okay, so we put a lot of work into uh, just like you said. Oh well, it's true. Oh, you got it right. Thank you very much. Let's move on. <laughs> No, every single questions come back with a solid feedback that either re-emphasize a concept or maybe introduce a concept of, of that same lecture and so on and so forth. So there's a tremendous value of feedback uh, that is put online that kind of compensate for Kelsey asking the instructor a question and then the instructor goes in a five minute discussion on something, right? Uh, so, so that's where that's where we try to compensate as 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 much as we can. Um, uh, I think PJ, you were one of the the participants, but could you maybe also mention? And that's another tool that we try to not try, but that we use to uh, elevate the level of interactivity of online, and it's the video chats. Yeah. So uh, I unfortunately wasn't able to participate in all of them, but I I did. Uh, a handful of them um and those were every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern and i'm eastern time here um and yeah it, uh, it, you know they ranged from a couple of participants to to a number of them but uh uh i wasn't sure what to expect the first time i joined one i think it, it, it's a zoom so it's kind of like this um but uh um I thought maybe it's just uh, kind of like a social thing and a couple of students hop on and you all chat. And actually once you jumped on, um, you know, there was some structure to it and came with discussion points, um, the, the tutors did. Uh, and then, you know, naturally some of us would have some questions or points of clarification, um, but uh, it was helpful. So, and, and uh, I wasn't able to join as many as I would have liked to if uh, it, it happened to be at, uh, it's bedtime every every Tuesday night, uh, so a few of them I was able to split off. But uh, uh, it, the few that I was able to join, it was useful. It was valuable. Very good. Yeah, and 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 by the way, those uh, the tutors will uh, do some predetermined topics. Uh, and as you mentioned, you know, if anybody has a question, you know, that that's a perfect occasion to to uh, to ask. 
the question, but also uh, because it's a yeah, it's a Zoom meeting format. It is recorded, and the recording goes onto onto the platform uh, within a few hours for those that could not participate because of scheduling or whatever, whatnot. They can at least still still view view this. So it's another kind of uh, thing that we try to bring as close as possible to the uh, to the campus experience. Um, going back to you, Kelsey, and and maybe uh, oh, no. pushing into pushing into the idea of the campus. And, and again, if you would be talking to someone and say, uh, or or they are on 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 the fence uh, between campus and online. Um, in in your mind, what are the pros and what are the cons of of campus? Sorry, I was breaking up. Are you asking me? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sorry, Kelsey. Yes, um, so. The pros and cons. Uh, it would have been nice to yeah have it spaced out and be able to do it while working. I left Wayfinder in March, so I just happened to like have the ability to take a little time off and devote those two weeks to it. Um, but if I had been working in the brewery still, uh, I don't know how we would have been able to schedule around that. <laughs> uh, they're usually small teams, you know. Um, so I think that would have definitely been a pro, but being in person, and uh, that's kind of what I needed was to be able to interject and say, that's the part I don't get, you know? <laughs> um, so that was like a pro for me. I, that's kind of, I know my style of learning. And uh, I am a procrastinator as well, so I didn't trust myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Yeah, it's a, it's absolutely true. I, I mean, you have to. I think that sometimes, you know, I say uh, it, it depends what kind of learner you are. Uh, this being said, and and you guys might not know that, but uh, uh, do you know that that the lectures that you that uh, that for you the instructors and you PJ quote unquote by yourself are exactly the same lectures? Did you realize that? I wondered. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are exactly the same lectures. Uh, the only difference is obviously that one is uh, is presented with a live person in front of you, whereas the other one, when we're talking about the concise, uh, the, the 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 information, what we call, what we kind of like to say, ninety percent of the information is right there on on the uh, on the slide. Um, and then the instructor is there basically to not 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 uh, uh, read the slides, but you know to fill in the blanks, if you will, right? Um, but um, it's exactly the same depth of knowledge, what we call the depth of knowledge. So, like we said at the beginning, the concise is an intermediate level uh, of uh, of depth of knowledge. But you too, uh, at the end, you're getting actually the same level of evaluation minus, my, well, not minus, it's, it's just because it's a different tool. Uh, the same way that Kelsey has the opportunity to ask questions uh, for you, PJ, what we're giving you online is the self-assessment portion that allows you to kind of evaluate yourself. And when we are grading everything, uh, it's pondered at, at a lower weight value than the the other type of assessment, what you call the mini essays. We call them mentored quizzes. It's the same thing. You right. answer, yep. you type in, you type in a question, you type in an answer, and then the tutor will review, comment, and grade your your information. So it's it's kind of the same thing. So it's it's a very important point to to make is that uh, quote unquote your certificate. That you that you receive, uh, you receive campus or you receive online uh, is is exactly the same is exactly the same thing. Uh, you can be assured that you receive the same depth of knowledge uh, in in both uh, both um, uh, format of delivery, if you will. If uh, uh, I, I think you mentioned that, I'm pretty sure you did uh, at the beginning, PJ. Uh, but for you, what are the uh, the pros and the cons of uh, of the online version. Yeah, I think for me the the reality is uh, I I really only had one choice. You know, I would have loved to do the um, the in person, but it but it it wouldn't have worked for me. And you know where where I am in life right now. Um, but I think you know beyond that, even even if I had the option to take both, um, 
I, I, I would probably still do the online one and, and not even for any, you know, pandemic concerns or anything like that. I'd love to go to Chicago. It's only a 45 minute flight for me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it just, it, I, I think the pace really worked out for me. I would say that was the biggest pro for me mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, th- there were some, there were some lectures and subject matter that I found pretty easy and it was, um, you know, stuff that I was familiar with. And then there were some that were quite challenging, you know, quite a lot of detail, you know, uh, pretty technical <laughs> science stuff. Um, and to be able to really slow down and take my time with it and click backwards a few slides to the lecture and like, let me listen to that again. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I took quite a lot of notes. I had a, a Google document open the whole time that I was going through these and uh, I took too many notes, but um, I took a lot of notes. Uh, but it was helpful to just to just do that. And I think uh, in person, you probably have an instructor. They got a schedule to keep, and I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. And for me, I was able to just you know pause the lecture and mm-hmm. jot down whatever whatever I wanted to get down, and and then move forward from there. Excellent, excellent. So so uh, Kelsey, so so you you came back home with uh, with a uh, a uh, suitcase full of. Uh, Full of notes, or your or your uh, high drive was uh, totally overloaded, or? <laughs> uh, well, I have. Yeah, they let you take home. Like they let you download all the slides, so we definitely have everything to review. If you have any questions there, um, but yeah, I'm still organizing my notes. I think the first week no. you're like taking too many notes, and then you like once you get into those like dense, dense subjects you realize like the slides will probably be more helpful and i should be present you know uh because there are some tough days especially not being in school for so long and then going to eight hour lectures yeah. some days were like zombie yeah, everyone not, was it, like mm. <laughs> yeah it's it's not it's it's not obvious to go back to uh, eight hours a day uh, in front of someone uh, even if the person tap and dance uh, it's not uh, it's not obvious yeah. to be to be focused on this. That's good. What about you, PJ? You were able to download uh, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of material, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, and it was uh, pointed out to us repeatedly. Download the lectures by this date because if you don't by this date, you got to pay for them. So you know, and I, I listened. I downloaded them. I have them all <laughs> on my Google Drive, and uh, you know, and I've got my notes that I took and. Uh, um, you know, kind kind of similar to what Kelsey was saying, there were some points where there was just so much detail that, and I I knew that this piece of information from the lecture was something I wanted reflected in my notes, but I didn't want to type the whole thing, so I got pretty proficient at screen grabbing little sections of it <laughs> and sticking that in my notes. Um, you know, and uh, uh, so yeah, it it worked quite well for me. Excellent, excellent. Um, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, I was going to ask. Yeah, when it when it comes down, I think you you kind of mentioned that a little bit, Kelsey. But uh, you know, in terms of evaluation assessment, is that you basically campus has two main assessment, correct? One yeah. at, one at the end of the first week and one the second week. Um, how did you feel about that? It was good because John would, has like the tests pretty much laid out to correspond to the slideshows and the presentations. So if there was something that somebody maybe accidentally skipped over or wasn't explained well enough, those tests would show that and we would review them like the day after we took them. He would hand them back out and then we could go through and see why you missed because there was like true or false or multiple choice. And then we had like a couple like short essays, but not much. Um, But that was like a way to like make sure the whole class was on the right page as well as like explaining things that maybe got like glossed over so that was like really encouraging excellent 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 and you you as well uh, pj uh how do you feel about all the assessment that uh, you had to go through yeah so it's, it sounds like the structure of assessment is different uh between the online and the in-person is that right well um, it's, it, it, it's different yes and no in the sense that uh actually the questions that you had uh, are the question that we use for campus. Okay. okay. So, so, so again, even at the evaluation part, uh, not necessarily in quantity, because as you mentioned, 
uh, after each lecture, uh, you had a self-assessment of yeah. seven to ten questions, seven to you know, something exactly. like that. Yeah. And then and then you had three or four mentored quiz question where you had to type yep. in. What Kelsey, what Kelsey had is is two um, main assessment, but those okay. assessment are made from the same question that you that you had. Okay, so, so again, it's, a, it's a little yeah. bit different structure. Yours was just like spaced out, and ours was like yeah, big test, big test. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah. I think I like my way better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, little bit, you know. Uh, nibbling off pieces of information rather than you know big hunks. Um, yeah, I, th I think I would, uh, would have been fine with the in person, but uh, you know I did like it that it was like you're focusing on this one kind of block of information that's all cohesive and all relates to each other. You're going to take a little exam on it, a uh, short you know uh, three question essay on it, and then on to the next subject. And I really liked that structure. Um, it really helped you just kind of take in all that information, get everything you could out of it, solidify it, and then move on. Um, you know, and, and I like that. That was helpful to me. Very good. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wrap up by by kind of uh, stating uh, what I view as being the differences and similarity. And then I'm gonna ask you a couple more questions to wrap it up. Um, First, um, we're talking about, we talked about the concise course, which is our intermediate level of depth of knowledge. We have the entry level, the executive, and then after the concise, you can go to the advanced Boring theory program. Um, I like to kind of give that picture that all those courses uh, covers beer production processes from raw material to a little bit of uh, brewing engineering. The difference is how deep you go. Uh, you, you, you guys ask, but executive has 17 lectures. Then you go to the concise and you have 33 lectures. And then you go to the ABT, again, to cover the same Bible, you have over 90 lectures. So you can see that, you know, we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Now, in terms of similarity, uh, it's exactly the same content. Uh, it's uh, it's fairly the same type of evaluation or assessment, so you can feel that your certificate is the same, and uh, and uh, and and you have access to the same to the same material. When it comes down to differences, well, it's obviously that uh, uh, you have the pleasure to be in Chicago. You have the ability or the opportunity to talk to uh, the instructors and ask questions on the live. Uh, and talk to your classmates uh, versus online, you're a little bit more uh, by yourself. That said, uh, through either weekly video chat or of course uh, via email, the tutors are very responsive, you would say, PJ, right? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, very responsive. So a lot of differences, but a lot of similarity as well. So, so my final question to you is that uh, at the end of all that, uh, are you, did that fulfill your expectation? And number two, uh, do you feel that what you acquire is something that you're really going to be able to use? So I'm going to start with you, Kelsey. Uh, yeah, I think it exceeded my expectations. Uh, I took like the like placement test, you know, to see which level I should be going into. Cause I didn't want to like just go pay for something that wouldn't, help me in my career uh just a piece of paper that says yeah uh and i got like a 70 percent like uh understanding on that test so i was like oh, i'll probably get something from this and i think that going in with a little knowledge helped me a lot to be able to understand like the higher like concepts um so i really i really got a lot out of the course i'm actually working at like a ready to drink cocktail company now Okay. But we use like all the same pumps and fermenter, like we're in an old brewing space. So I'm still able to use a lot of the knowledge, even if I'm not on a brew deck. Excellent. It's been helpful for sure. Yeah, because you, you, have, you have a point there. You know, we keep on saying brewing, but in fact, it's beer production processes and it's material to 
knowing about your pumps and which pump to use when and, and we're packaging it yeah it's yeah. it's really helpful exactly exactly so it's something you're going to be you're going to be able to use and and build on mm -hmm. very good Definitely. what about you pj uh yeah so i i i did something similar i did the online assessment to kind of see where i was at and i i don't remember how i did with it but uh um uh, I mentioned earlier that it was basically a vendor that, that recommended um, that I go to the concise course. And I had said to him, oh, you know, like there's these advanced modules and this one looks really interesting to me. Maybe I'll do that one. And he kind of laughed. And he's like, no, man, no, that's <laughs> you, you're a smart guy. But you're not ready for that. Um, you should do the concise course. That's what you're looking for. Um, and I think that was, again, uh, guys, just full of good advice. Um, so yeah it was it was the right choice for me and you know going into it i i wasn't totally sure what to expect i figured i'd learn some things i'd figure i'd hear some things that i had learned you know over the years through home brewing or, or working at the brewery um and uh i would agree with kelsey that it exceeded my expectations i i learned more than i thought i would uh the level of detail was uh an order of magnitude deeper than i thought it was going to be uh and it was it was extremely helpful so you know for me I learned a lot of new stuff. It, it personally gave me some confidence. Um, you know, part of my intention now is to take some of my notes and cond condense that down into something because um, I'm going to be in a somewhat unique position that I'll be, you know, both brewing beer and hiring and training brewers. So I do want to con condense down my notes into something that can be kind of an onboarding package. Uh, and, um, you know, maybe I'm jumping ahead. Maybe this is something you're going to ask, but uh, I, I, as I'm in the next couple of months going to be hiring people and things, if I see that they've been through this course, uh, that will definitely stand out to me. I'll know that they've been through a pretty robust, um, you know, education and uh, it, it is challenging. It's, it's not a breeze. Uh, it's obviously not possible. I did it, but, um, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it's legitimate. It's, it's, it's really good. I thought it was really helpful. And if, again, if I'm hiring somebody and I see that they've gone through this, that would mean something to me. And if I hire somebody that's pretty raw and doesn't have education, I hope that I'm in a position where I can encourage them and maybe even fund um, them to go uh, take the course. I, I think it's valuable. I think that, you know, I'm, you know we, we, we often say that uh, uh, people have the, the how, but necessarily the why, right? Uh, and, and that's why sometimes, sometimes people frown at the idea of, uh, Oh, well, you're taking a theoretical brewing course. What the heck is that? Well, it's, it's really because of this. And you, you alluded to that at the beginning when you said about home brewing. Uh, you can see, you can do some stuff in home brewing that will make it very successful. But if you try to translate that to, to craft beer at a larger volume, uh, there's a huge, huge gap in between. You're just talking about oxidation and that kind of stuff, right? So you know the how, but you don't really know the why. And and I love to say that uh, uh, that's my favorite definition of a, of a brewer is that a brewer is a glorified janitor with excellent problem solving skills. <laughs> and to have good problem solving skills, you have to know the why you're doing things. Okay, why the pump is cavitating, why this happens, how can I correct that? And and hopefully we were able to provide some of those uh, some of those whys and you'll be able to build build upon that so so that's very very nice Bob. thank you thank you very much uh, i think it was a great great conversation i learned a few things that i'm uh, i took note of and i'm gonna run with it <laughs> uh, so uh, so right now we have the um actually uh, for for pj it's the third uh, well for kelsey as well it's the third session of the year of the concise that started actually today, started today. Uh, and we are in the middle of the module three, uh, module three of the uh, advanced brain theory program that has been running now for five weeks. So another six weeks to go. And uh, yeah, so the online is, is definitely a possibility when you cannot, uh, like Kelsey, uh, you know, uh, afford, afford the time nor the money to, uh, to show up for a couple of weeks in beautiful Chicago. Uh, that's certainly another uh, another avenue. So thank you very much for being there. Let's see if we have uh, some some question. I see at least one. Uh, I don't know if uh, 
our moderator, uh, Miss uh, Natalie, is uh, still there and alive or, or totally asleep. I don't know what happened. I'm with you. This has been okay. great. Thank you. <laughs> so do we have anything for we us? We do. We have one question. It is, how do you see the advantage of in-person slash office courses as they relate to the increased opportunity for networking with both instructors, faculty, staff, and fellow students? Kelsey, you want to answer that? That I I regretted leaving that out earlier because that I mean that is a big benefit of being there in person um, is being able to go to like Andreas's brewery to to Great Central, uh, Great Central, right? Yes, that's the name. We have a bakery here named Grand Central, so very confusing. Anywho, so being able to go out with the professors after and have a beer um, and make those connections like fred Shear went out with all of us the last day of course with john and it was just like so fun to hear about his career but also like be able to make that connection that like if i'm in germany i can reach out to him and he will totally refer me to whatever brewery you know so it was really nice uh forming those bonds do you miss that uh, pj that's uh you know something that I think would have been valuable, um, you know, and, you know, probably not uh, for, you know, personal career opportunities, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm opening my own place and hopefully that's <laughs> it for me, but uh, uh, we'll see what the future holds. But um, yeah, it would have been great to network and, and just have some other conversations and build some personal relationships with people, um, you know, which, which I didn't really get to do. Um, but I will say that, um, right after I finished the course, I was invited to join the online Siebel Alumni Network, and I, I did sign on, and it's actually a pretty nicely laid out, um, uh, you know, group, website, whatever you want to call it, and there's, you know, places for information to be shared, and there's job posting places and, and things like that, and uh, uh, again, when it comes time for me to hire, I think we probably will post some of our jobs up there, um, and uh uh, if I'm ever looking for applicants, you know, I think that's a place I would look. So I, I do think I missed out on building some personal connections, but, it, you know, the, the Siebel has offered some other ways to connect with, you know, alumni and other folks that went through the program. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree with, uh, with you too, that, you know, it's a little bit more conducive and certainly easier when, uh, when you're, uh, you know, sharing the same room or, uh, you know, having a beer together to to uh, to make some contact. Uh, that being said, I want to s say to our audience that when you are online, uh, we are inviting, and and that's why it's a little bit not it's not as easy as it is. Some people want to stay uh, totally anonymous, and uh, that's one of the reasons why they take the online. You know, but uh, uh, we invite people to share their profile, to share their their bio, their brewing bio. <laughs> Uh, and, and make contacts and the, the weekly video chat is another place where uh, you can meet and introduce uh, introduce yourself to other participants. So so even if you're online, you have some opportunity. If you really want to go at it, uh, there's some opportunity, but it's obviously not as as easy as, you know, having a beer and then you loosen up a little bit and you start talking to, to other <laughs> people. I, I, I totally, I totally, totally, totally agree. I agree with you on that. So uh, hopefully it answered the, the question. But I want to reemphasize, though, the importance that, yes, the, the, the method of delivery is different. And like Kelsey, Kelsey um, uh, alluded to, alluded to uh, you know, that's her style of, uh, of learning is more like having somebody in front, in front of you and so on and so forth. But aside from that, uh, you are getting the same attention, you are getting the same depth of knowledge, you are getting the same material and the same opportunity to, to ask questions and online our tutors, and we are very proud of that, and that's how they are in, instructed or that's how they are guided to offer really that support. Uh, since they're not spending eight hours teaching in front of a class, uh, you know, we want them to spend the time to give you good feedback. So you answer a question and you're totally off. They won't tell you, well, sorry, PJ, you're wrong. Bye-bye. See you next time. They're really <laughs> going to be uh, 
uh, you know, giving you the feedback that you that you deserve, you know, so that at the end you end up with the same uh, certificate, if you will, or the same. Uh, it's not a certificate coming up of a bubble gum machine or something, right? <laughs> you know, they're the same thing. That's great, um, Natalie. Anything else, or or did we forget something, an angle or something that we should mention? I think that we're good. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, PJ and Kelsey. Um, you know, it's so valuable to always hear directly from the alumni. Um, and for anybody that's listening that's interested in more information, there's a green bar at the bottom of your screen that will take you directly to SiebelInstitute.com and um, show you all of our upcoming courses and how to enroll. Thank you very much, you guys. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Good luck. And PJ, same thing. Good luck. But uh, you know where to find Thank us you. if you have... Uh, <laughs> Any questions or something like this, you know where you know where to find us. Bye everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye, thank bye, you. bye. Thank you, Natalie.